What's going on guys? It's Tricks Ridiculous back at it with another video. So in this one, we're going to be talking about the Ruskaya Protocols event. Before we do, if you like these videos, be sure to like and subscribe. It really does support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. But let's get right into it. So first and foremost, let's be honest, this event sucks when compared to the last event we just got. Now, I went into this with very mild expectations, really not expecting anything in terms of content. And that's pretty much what we got. We basically just got a bunch of objectives, uh, just kind of making you run around, play the game in all different ways with all different characters and rewarding you with polychlorions and upgrade materials for your efforts. Uh, there wasn't really much you know, in terms of anything new, really nothing new, if I'm being completely honest. Um, but to be fair, you know, I've seen a lot of people kind of going crazy all over the forums about how bad the event is. And I think, you know, just in comparison to the Tachyon Anomaly event, which was actually a unique way to play the game, I had very good things to say about the Tachyon Anomaly event. The fact that, you know, even though there was no new content per se, being able to play with multiple of the same character, it was a very different way to play the game. Really fun, really interesting. Something we haven't been able to do. So it got people excited. It got people back in and, you know, kind of just goofing around in the game. It wasn't anything super end game game right it's obviously not the omega level threats it's not like a raid or any type of content like that but just a fun little event to pass the time while we wait for the large expansions now this event the ruskaya protocols you can't even really call it an event it's almost more like a passing within the game uh, as we kind of build up to the red room event that happens on the 20th of this month. Now, my take on this is kind of whatever. Like I said, I kind of went in with almost no expectations. This wasn't exactly something I even expected. I didn't, you, you know, we didn't know that the Red Room was going to be a quote two part event until just like a week before it was actually coming out. They, they mentioned that part one of it was coming out. I think it was a little irresponsible for them to call it part one you know, and really looking at it as two parts. I understand how, like, you know, the events are, they try to connect it at least thematically, but realistically, I mean, this event could have been anything. They could have literally had the exact same objectives, but let's say, for example, they said instead of those, you know, Ruskaya chips, we were getting vibranium shards, and it was the lead up, you know, part one of Black Panther. Like, it was really a nothing event. So to even call it an event was not really... Um, you know, warranted by Crystal Dynamics. But at the same time, the way I look at it, the alternative was nothing, right? If, you know, right after the end of the Tachyon Anomaly event, if Crystal Dynamics had, you know, just said, okay, guys, the Red Room is coming May 20th, we'll see you then. And then until then, it was just business as usual within Avengers. There wouldn't have even been any news. The fact that they put out a quote-unquote event and it was very, you know, very uneventful uh, is suddenly the most negative press, right? Like, honestly, it's it's just a, a little something as opposed to the alternative, which was absolutely nothing. So I, pe I think people need to chill the F out. You know, if you, if you, you know, really weren't going to play it anyway, then just don't play it. It's really not the biggest deal. Just wait for the Red Room. The Red Room, I think, will be pretty cool. Um, we'll have to see, you know, what comes out with it. We still have very little information, but we do know it will be um, a some at least some type of new game mode. Uh, they did mention, I don't want to spoil too much, uh, from what they mentioned, but they said there's going to be actual, um, you know, platforming type challenges, sort of like a can't touch the floor, floor is lava type of deal. Um, so that could be pretty interesting. We'll have to see how that works, you know, within the game. But, you know, until that comes out, it, the way I look at this event is really just business as usual, as if there were no event at all. Right. That's pretty much it. Now, the thing that a lot of people are going crazy about is the skins. People are saying, oh, the event's a paywall. The event's just a money grab. You know, everything's locked behind skins. And to be fair, yes, they should, in my opinion, have definitely at least had one or two of the kind of, you know, not the MCU Black Widow skin, but at least, at least like one of the Red Room theme skins or a couple of those skins earnable through in-game actions. I do believe they should have done that. I think they're being a little stingy by not doing that. But at the same time, you know, I've always had a pretty neutral take on skins. If you don't like them, don't buy them. People 
are still complaining about the MCU Black Widow. Honestly, I know a lot of people, you know, who have come into chat, who have come into YouTube uh, comments and have just been saying, wow, that skin looks great. I'm getting it. And you know what? They like the skin. If people like the skin, they're going to buy the skin. If you don't like the skin, don't buy the skin. It has no effect at all on your gameplay or how much you enjoy the game. Um, so that's always been my take. And honestly, you got to if you don't like the price of skins, that's even more reason to not buy them. Going on the forums, complaining, you know, that the skins are too expensive when they've been the exact same price pretty much since the launch of the game. Um, aside from a few random sales here or there, but primarily they've been $14 for a uh, legendary skin and $9 for an epic skin. Even when the MCU skin, the very first one with Black Widow came out, it was still only $14. They've been extremely consistent, especially considering this was uh, an, a very highly, highly requested thing that they start to introduce these skins. People are already clamoring for the Captain America. They can't wait to see the Iron Man and the Thor. So you know people are going to pay for these skins. Some people are going to pay for these skins, right? But as a player, if you don't like the price, the best way to contribute is to just not buy them. If they see that people aren't buying skins at a given price point, they will look to the money and they will say, oh, maybe this isn't a good price for these skins. Maybe if we lower them a bit, people will buy them at the new price point, right? And then if you buy them then, if that's a good deal for you, that's good value in your eyes, buy them then and that's what they'll look at. Obviously, it'll take a lot of people doing that, but it is what it is. It's the only thing that matters. If the skins are flying off the shelves, you know, they don't care if any one, you know, Joe Schmo goes on Reddit and posts about how skins are too expensive and it gets a thousand upvotes. It doesn't matter if they're making a ton of money on the skins. So that's all I really have to say on the skins. I will admit they did really overload us with skins for this event. I Definitely, I'll admit some of them, you know, should have been uh, earnable in game without having to buy. I totally support that, at least for, for a good amount of them. Uh, but honestly, like I said, if you don't like it, don't buy it. I, personally, I don't think most of the skins in this uh, Red Room type of event, I don't think half of them look good anyway. That's just my personal opinion, so I wasn't going to get them anyway. And even if they weren't earnable in-game, I probably wouldn't wear them either way. So that's just my opinion. But overall, like I said, this event, I mean, it could have been a nothing event, right? It could have just been nothing. We could have just had dead air from now until, you know, May, 20, May 20th when the Red Room came out. And people would have not batted an eyelash. But the fact that they do a little something, a tiny bit something extra, and the expectations for it are always through the moon, it comes back to bite them. So it's just a little bit of a catch-22 on their end where, you know, they can't even put out something small without it kind of coming back to bite them that it's not good enough. Um, so honestly, I think people just need to chill the F out, just relax. Uh, you know, if you don't want to play, you want to wait to the Red Room, go ahead. I promise you, you're not missing anything, right? But if you want to just play through the event now, get the rewards, get a few extra polys, go for it. it. It would be like you're just playing the game anyway. Anyway, that's all I've got for you guys in this one. Just wanted to share my opinion on the event. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you do like these kind of videos. And I'll see y'all in the next one.